let me go through the toolboxes here. I just went through this, so again, drag your clips here. Make sure when you're placing them that you get the black bar without a wipe uh, arrow up here on the timeline because that means it's snapping to the timeline and not the previous clip. Sure. If you're not sure, however, what you can do is drag your, um, I don't know what they call this, but... Scrubby thingy? Well, they used to have a scrubby thing, but they got rid of it. Apparently oh. only 10% of people use it. But anyway, your, your position here. Uh, and the zoom, if you haven't figured it out, you drag uh -huh. into this. But but if you move the scrubber, which is why I did this, mm -hmm. and you zoom in, it'll zoom in on that location. Oh, cool. So if we're zoomed way out and we can't tell if there's a gap there, we can move our tool close by, zoom in, and then we can see that there's a gap. Okay. At this point, we can either drag the clip, making sure you don't accidentally click the opacity, which is what this does, this yellow line. Um, mm -hmm. And, and not clicking this either because that'll we'll fault that. But if you just click this and drag, it'll move over, and then you're going to get the black bar and some arrows on the actual two clips. However, another way you can do it is do a right click in this this uh, dead space and do ripple okay. delete. So is a ripple that, 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 that gap then? Yeah. But the nice okay. thing about a ripple delete, and I'll zoom out to show you what it does. Um, let me put this clip three times. Um, so we have a couple things here. If I do a ripple delete, it'll move everything. So I don't know if you saw that, but we can select two clips and I'll move it back over here. So when you do a ripple delete, it moves both clips. As opposed to if we just move one clip, it doesn't move with the other necessarily. And so this is nice because even if you do select multiple clips and move them, you might have another clip way down here somewhere that you don't have. So if you do a ripple delete, you'll be sure that everything kind of moves over to where you want it. Okay? Make sense? Does that make sense, Matt? Oh, you still with me? Who knows? Hey, my connection just dropped. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so where I, I lost you right when you were going to move that second clip. I think you were planning on making like two gaps or something. Yeah. So, if you have, I mean, if you have two gaps, that's one thing. If you, even if you don't have two gaps, um, bottom line of what I want to convey is when you drag one clip, it's not going to drag the others. Right. So have a, then have a new gap here. If you do a ripple okay. delete, it's going to move everything to the right, to the left. Cool. And that's just a right click, right? Yeah. Right click in the dead space. Um, and so I'll do that for like if there's multiple gaps, I can just do a ripple and then a ripple, and we're good. Uh, so that's nice when you are, if you want to insert something real quick, what I'll do um, is I'll select everything to the end, like that, mm -hmm. you just drag, and then you can make a gap, put in something else that you want to put in, um, and then when you're done, you can ripple blade and it's all matched up together. Cool. The reason you need to do that in the first place is if you notice, when I drag down this clip, if it's too big, you see that overlap there? Yeah. If it's too big, it's going to scrunch the other video to make to make room. It won't bump the video. So okay. it just made that clip shorter, and that's not typically what you want. Right. Um, so that's why I usually overkill it. Just, I give myself a ton of room. Just drag it way down here. And then when I'm done putting the new clip in, then I can ripple delete and move it all back. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there might be a more efficient way to do that. I'm not sure. There might be a shift or something to bump it, but I'm not sure. Anyway, that's how I do it. Um, something of note is if you have a clip way down here somewhere, when you do this drag and you think you're all clever because you because uh, you did your ripple delete and everything's all good, you guys still have this clip hanging out way out here. Um, mm -hmm. So a quick way 
to figure that out. Usually this will fit to the end of the clip. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, hit the end key. Um, yeah, the end, e -N -D key on the keyboard will jump to the e end of the video, so then you can add the last clip on the video. Okay. So then you can see if there's any gaps. Um, you see these yellow bars up here and then red bars. Uh, basically, that's telling us that there's no pre-rendering done for this. Okay. Um, additionally, if we add a video effect to this, so let me just do a quick video effect of auto color, for example. We're going to get a red bar. Yep. That means that has not been rendered at all. There's not even a preview, but that, that effect has not been rendered either. Mm -hmm. um, I originally don't do any pre-rendering because it's pretty resource intensive. And uh, CS6 does a pretty good job of showing the effect in the preview. Um, mm -hmm. on, on a, I mean, your computer will be fine. But it is good to know because if you didn't mean to have an effect there, when you're zoomed way out, you can quickly see where you have uh, things applied, layers on top, basically. Right. Um, these videos, you can keep adding new videos. So if you want a new track, you can do add track. And you can either add a video track and audio track, or just a video track and just audio track. I'll add both. There we go. Now we have another video, another audio track. Okay. Uh, if you want to view one of these panels on its own, you can hit the uh, tilde key, and it will zoom that whole panel to the full screen. Okay. Which on a laptop is pretty useful. Sure. Uh, on a desktop, uh, you can move stuff around pretty well. Um, when I usually edit, um, I usually have all the audio tracks open like this. Uh, you mentioned yesterday about clapping to figure it need to sync your audio. Uh, yeah, you'll need to do that. But if you make this large enough and zoom in large enough, that clapper will be super apparent because it'll just be a spike. Yep. Um, and you can line them up pretty easily. Now, to line up clips um, that are on multi-track, let me do that. So I'm going to move this up to the second layer. And it didn't move the audio, unfortunately. So I'm just going to replace it. I replace it on video track two. Yeah, so you see it's grouping to the other track. Yep. Um, then we should be able okay, to move so, this independently. So how did you display the waveforms on there? What okay, that? this little down arrow right here. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so right now, these the tracks are linked. I'm going to make this full screen. Uh, these, the audio track is linked with the video track. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not want that. Like if you just want the audio track, um, I'm trying to think of a reason, but I have had reasons in the past where I need to separate the audio and video if they're out of sync or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the way you do it is you right click and you do unlink. Yep. You're good to go. So then you can move this independently. If you need to link them again, you can hit control, I believe. No, shift, shift, uh, and click both. And mm -hmm. then, hmm, I don't know how to relink. Maybe you have to just replace. Maybe they have to be together. No, nope, doesn't like it. Don't oh, know. All right. While this, oh, sorry, while this um, is on top as a layer, that doesn't mean that. So let me get some other video. So import doop doop. Do I have some other video? I have uh, your video of the. I believe this. This is the. Uh, yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Cool. So we got this. I'm gonna get rid of. The, oh, right. I unlinked that audio track. Let me clean this up a little bit. So, of course, just like Photoshop, the layer on top takes precedence. Um, so, but that doesn't mean we can't change the opacity, of course. So the quick way to change the opacity is to grab this yellow toolbar and drag it down, and now our opacity has changed. If you look on the actual preview pane, um, you'll see that the opacity has changed. Now we have fire and new dancing merged, which is 
pretty strange. Um, right. This is not a good way to do a transition, but it is a possible way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to do a transition this way, uh, the way you would do it is you double-click the the video you want to change. So I just double-click this top track because I want to change its opacity to reveal mm-hmm. the track below it. And we're going to go to Effect Controls. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm make Effect Controls bigger for you. Um, and we can go to Opacity and do a drop-down here. And what we need to do is we need to um, add keyframes like you would in, in an animation program. So if I want to start at 8 seconds, I've decided that's where I want to have the effect start. I can make a keyframe right there. Okay. Uh, and then I want to go to 24, and that's when I want it to be completely changed. I can add a keyframe there. And at this keyframe, so I've selected this keyframe now, it's yellow, I can change that capacity to, say, like 43% or something. Mm-hmm. So what this will do for us is you'll see on the left side there, we're changing that opacity automatically, mm-hmm. gradually, so we don't have to do that work. Sure. And we can add multiple keyframes. So sometimes uh, when I want to do slow motion, I want it to slow down rapidly and then slow down gradually. So it'll be kind of a... Uh, a I'm making a motion with my hand, but a gradual curve instead of just a straight line is more of a uh, yeah. you know, curved line. Uh, sure. So we can add another keystone here and change its opacity a little bit or make it a little more. And then when we preview that, and you'll see the keystones are now showing up here as well. And we can quickly drag these up or down. Okay. But it's, it's just less precise. So we play. Yeah, so that opacity is changing. Oh, there's no video behind it. That's clear. I don't have anything showing. Video behind it now. Okay, so I made a opacity change way oh eight minutes, that's why. Haha. Uh-huh. So let me move this video over here so we can actually see this effect happen. There you go. Alright, so we had a little transition there. Mm-hmm. Alright, so that's that. Um, okay. so this is where you're going to do all those effects with keystones. Um, this is also where you're going to do audio effects easily. Uh, so down here, like the opacity on the audio, you can have your actual uh, audio volume here. Okay. Um, typically, you want to have the master volume as loud as you want the whole video to be, and then you adjust this accordingly. You, know, you want to start. You want to be as, as zero as possible. Um, and people are going to correct me on that, but basically you want, you don't want to have to boost uh, every single clip. You want to have some normalized level and then adjust the clips that are a little bit quiet or a little bit loud. Sure. Um, when you have multiple clips in a video, let me zoom out here. Um, they have changed how to do this in Premiere. And okay. there is, and I have looked it up once before, but you can normalize multiple clips uh, if you right-click and do auto game. Mm-hmm. Then you can say uh, normalize max peak to zero or normalize all peaks to zero. And what all that'll do is it's going to adjust uh, both videos, audio levels, so that when you go clip to clip, the levels are about the same. Okay. So we have notice here, we've now um, yeah is sorry not fine. Oh, there's no. Did you lose your burrito? I lost my. Here. I'm not seeing your mouse move at all, by the way. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. I don't see more effects showing up here anymore. I've done something bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multiple clips selected, that's why. There we go. Okay. So if we do multiple clips, we do auto gain, normalize zero. 
Let's select one clip. There we go. So is there a volume adjustment on this? Yes. Okay. So this is uh, Premiere has, has pushed this up to three decibels, uh, boosted this to three decibels to compensate for the volume of the next clip. So you can normalize the whole video that way if you'd like. Okay. Um, like any audio, when you're recording audio, you see these red bars up here. If they will stick, so it doesn't mean that you're actively um, clipping, but mm -hmm. it does mean that a clipping occurred recently. So if mm -hmm. you're hitting that um, red bar frequently like that, so that was that was when I just tapped the stupid, you know, built-in microphone. When you mm -hmm. tap the camera, it makes those loud clicks. You can see them here on the audio graph. That's where it, it peaked there. Um, mm -hmm. If that's the case, then we can pull back the master a little bit. So that way that doesn't happen. If you do hit the red a lot, it's just going to sound like crap, especially when it gets compressed. Mm -hmm. so you don't want to. So just like you don't want to boost too much, you also don't want it too loud, so you can pull it back. All right. So when I'm recording the camera, what should I be aiming for? Is like as high as I can without clipping it? Yes, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So if you get those uh, those mm -hmm. Sennheiser um, lobs mm -hmm. on the actual Sennheiser is a peak light. So I usually talk as loud as I think I'm going to possibly do, and mm -hmm. then uh, figure out what the peak is, and I bring it back about two decibels. Okay. So then yeah, because I, I, I end up getting the Rode Video Mic Pro. Uh huh. Cool. So, so it's, just, uh, it's it's just tough to test the levels when it's only me running the camera. I don't have a monitor to see the levels when I'm at where I'm standing at. So. Yeah. Um, I wonder, because on my D600, you can do the uh, wireless app, but I don't think the 800 has that. No, D4 does. Mm. Uh, but you can actually see what the screen, because on the screen, there's that there's that level. Um, maybe if, I don't know how long, if you can run an audio extension cable to the road disk at the level, you can move the mic equally distant away from you while you watch the camera and get a level. But, you know, you might just need to stand in to talk or look at the screen for you. Yeah. Assistance, yay. I don't have any. Oh, well, I guess I, I guess I always hook it up to my TV if I need to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HD mount. Bottom either, either that or I just need... Oh, well, I guess I can always hook, hook it up to my monitor, too. Whatever. But, yeah. All right, so let me... Um, do you have any questions so far? Uh, I think we're good so far, okay. yeah. So let me go... Uh, I know I'm kind of jumping around, but let me That's go fine. to these this toolbox here. Okay. Um, primarily, I mean, you may leverage these other tools, but primarily I use the razor tool and this and the select tool. Um, the okay. hand tool is somewhat useful, except now how they made this scroll bar. At first, I was really annoyed by it. You know, change is always hard, but it's kind of cool because you you get your zoom and you get your scroll at the same time. So uh -huh. I don't really use the hand tool and I don't use the zoom tool, Shoot, but the razor tool is extremely useful. It's still there. Um, the razor tool is extremely useful for where you're, when you're cutting clips up. He says something about your connection. Oh, yeah. Your hey, video, you still there? Yeah, your video was a little choppy, but it looks like you're back. Yeah, my connection dropped again. I just switched to my other router, so. Fancy. We'll see if it gets any better. Um, so in the past, there was an actual scrubber tool, which I loved because that's the classic feel, but I guess no one used it, so they pulled it out. Um, so what you have now for scrubbing, and this is you're going to be your best way to do this, is the J, K, and L keys on your keyboard. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we scrub back, we should be able to do that more slowly. Um, it, yeah, I think if you hold K and then yeah, tap shift. L, it'll... Uh, shift it'll shift J is right. going slowly, yeah. Yeah frame by frame. So once we get to the frame I want, and I can move forward. Oh, God. So I say Thanks I want. for shooting that behind the scenes video, by the way. It looks right. great. Yeah, let me uh, I didn't get to do that. Um, so when you get the frame that you want, and of course you can always adjust manually here and type in frame 22. That's the one. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing with the razor tool is it's going to snap to that red line. So if I click over here, it's still going to uh, cut where I have the selector uh, cursor tool. Okay. Cool. So keep that in mind because if you want to cut right here, you got to move the cursor and then you got to cut again. Okay. Because it will try and snap. Um, 
And sometimes you will need to have a clip that short, in which case zoom in, give yourself some, some room, and then you can cut what you want. Okay, so I don't want that frame, right, those two frames right here, because there was some weird booger flying out of his nose. And we're going, you don't have to select the selector tool. You can right-click with the razor tool, and you can do mm -hmm. a clear or okay. ripple delete automatically. So we don't, we can, we can uh, skip a step by just doing a ripple delete. That does a clear and a ripple delete. Okay. So then we've we've moved it over. Uh, so those are the two tools I use most. There is this move tool, which I believe moves everything. Let me zoom out more. Everything to the right of it. Yeah. So that moves everything to the right of it as a push. That's nice. Okay. So you don't have to do a whole select of, to the end of the, the track. So if you ripple delete, will that move all, all three of those rows then? It should, yes. Um, however, you know, if this is like this, yeah, and I do a ripple delete here, then it will keep that placement, which is nice, but just keep in mind. All right. Um, I'm going to move this back, and that's going to cause trouble because I just overwrote this clip here. So I, what I really need to do is... I wonder if I can do a whole move, like, you know, I can. Okay, cool. So this works in both directions. Bada boom. And I just overrode our audio track because I'm not keeping them separate properly. Hmm. So this audio, this is on audio one instead of audio two, so I need to drag this down to audio two. So that way when I copy this over, it's not going to um, overwrite audio one's tracks. Um, the other reason you might want to unlink this is so this is when it's useful to unlink. You have two tracks on top of each other. You don't want to hear one track. You also don't want to mute it. You can unlink the track if you want, and then just nuke the audio only. Um, just keep in mind once you do that, there's no real going back easily, and when you move stuff independently, uh, it won't move with the audio tracks. Mm -hmm. All right, so we covered opacity, we covered audio levels, we covered so auto. Can we go over syncing audio? Sure. So um, I don't have a good example on this computer, uh, but so bottom line, uh, I can at least describe it. Because like, um, okay, like, so my problem was like when I was doing the tutorial, I had my screen uh, recording audio, and then I was trying to use my audio for my DSLR for the for everything. Right. But I forgot to clap, so. I mean, it would probably would be easier. So let's say I had clapped. Like, would I just find that spike in both of them and then move it to the same frame yes. and then and then cut it all equally? Exactly. So the way you need to do this is you need to give yourself some room because some tracks are going to have to move left. So I'm going to give myself some room from the left side. So I need my toolbox. Um, let me grab that. So I'm going to move everything. Oops. Select all. So control all works here. Mm -hmm. Control A or Apple A or Command yeah. A or Apple um, You just need to keep. What is it? You need to Control A and then Shift to, hold, to keep with the selection. There you go. So now we have some room. We can always ripple delete later. Um, there is a shortcut to get back to select tool is V. All right, cool. It's just like Photoshop. Yep. Um, a thing I hate about Lightroom is none of the shortcuts are like Photoshop. Piss me <laughs> off because they're ca it's called Photoshop Lightroom. But anyway. I digress. When we move this track here, which is now unlinked from the freaking audio, you know, gosh darn it, let me replace these things. Turn it over. Bam. 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 So we got the spike here, and say we're link we're syncing this spike. Well, that's really far away, but no auto save, yay. Um, we are going to remove of everything, give myself some room, and then I want to sync, let's say, this spike right here with that spike, so that's our clapper. Sure. Um, then I'm going to do the select tool, grab this, and then what I usually do is, first off, just get it kind of close. Uh, and we didn't give ourselves enough room, unfortunately. So what is the move tool? A. Give ourselves more room. All right, now we can move this over. It's right there. So now I know it's about the same because what I did was I clicked right above that spike, 
If I right. click over here, that doesn't give me, do me any good. But if I click above the spike and move over here, I know I'm about good. At mm -hmm. that point, I can move my cursor tool there, and do a zoom in. So what I sometimes do is I zoom out to center it, and then I zoom back in. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we're, we're actually really close here. So then what we can do is I can either use the arrow key, you know, arrow keys move from that. So I got to move just like this. And when you're zoomed in, it'll move frame by frame. So you see down there, it shows my frame there. Right. Um, when you're zoomed out, it will do multiple frames. So you need to be zoomed in and do frame by frame. And you can get it as close as possible. Sometimes you will not get it. I mean, frames are you're typically 24 a second. So... Uh, mm -hmm. It may not be perfectly in sync. It may be a quarter or a half of a frame off. That's why shooting at 60 is nice. Usually the audio will also be at 60. Um, so you can move it around that way. But you may not be perfect, but it will be really darn close, and you won't notice it on the actual video. It, it's a quarter of a frame, which is a quarter of a 29th of a second. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's how I would normally sync it. And then if I still had any room on the left side here, which we do, that's what yeah, we do. Okay, right so, then, so then is there any way to link those together so they don't move again, or? You just don't, <laughs> just don't move. Okay. Yeah. Um, you may be able, yeah, you should be able to group them. Mm, no. Typically you would just you would select both and then you move. But Okay. Yeah. I, I, I haven't had that problem, honestly. Because what okay. we're going to do next is we just want the sections that we want and we want to cut out the other things that we don't. So that's when we're going to use the cut tool and we're going to cut some sections out and nuke them. And we can move stuff around. All right. And we get the next clip that we want, cut it out, and so forth. Now, an, a nice workflow to do this cutting is to use this box here for the source. Um, Open up the next video you want to have in here. So let's say we're just doing a one-track video. We have our fancy mat, uh, and we have our um, flaming. Oh, I don't remember his name. Jonathan. And so if we have, when, when I'm working on a long video, I'll have sections where I, I know what I, what's going on at the end. I know what's going on in the middle, and I know what's going on in the middle, but uh, at the beginning, but uh, I haven't done the middle yet. Right, so I'm working on the chunks of video I want, so I just leave a gap there. I'm not sure if it's big enough, but we can always do a nudge, a ripple blade, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go to the next video that I want to edit, double-click it up here. Mm -hmm. and you'll actually see it saved from the last time when I, because I didn't use this whole video when I, when I uploaded that clip. I just used a section here. So the way we do that is we go to the section we want and hit the space bar, and again, we can do a shift and go back, because now we're in this, this, this is what's selected, so that's what's going to be used. Mm -hmm. When we use this tool, I'm going to go to frame I want, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this in mark, okay, okay. or use the I key. And that's going to set our in, and we go to wherever we want the out, we set O as our out. Mm -hmm. And what we can do is just drag. So that'll drag just that little section of it then? Right. And I'm having trouble snapping that. Let's see, try it again. Oh, here we go. So control will give us a nice little piece there that we'll go off of. I want to make sure I can go here, zoom in, yada yada. Bob's your uncle. Sure. Does that make sense? So you, you yeah. set your in, you set your out, you can go there. Now, these tools right here quickly get you to the in and out. Shift I and Shift O. That's useful for when you just want to jump to the beginning and not guesstimate where you are. And then you okay. might want to back up a frame because I actually want it to be 11. And I'm going to set a new in. And then the in marker will show up. Uh, OK, so then say you want to drag that down there again. Is there a way, isn't there a way to like overwrite that clip or something? Um, I believe if I drag over it, it will. But I usually just do a delete. So I'm sure I know I'm knowing what the placing is. OK. Yeah. Um, And that's just going to insert. Okay, so this is also useful if you want to insert right where this is. So I say I'm going to go right there. I can do this, and it's going to insert uh, okay. that section. And it will also, it's going to bump uh, the rest of this video. So I don't know if you notice that. 
when he did this, it bumped everything and kept that same space. Sure. Um, I usually just move it over how much I need, see what it's like, and then I do a ripple delete. But you can do either. Okay. Um, let me give you some effects uh, information. Okay. Um, so we did transparency, which is pretty basic here, but we can do some nice transitions. Um, usually on videos, I'll do a fade to black at the end. It's just kind of a nice little thing before that, um, before YouTube at least, because YouTube shows up those next videos. And if you don't have crap in the background, it's kind of nice, so I just do a fade to black. Um, but if I want to do a transition, I'm going to go in between two clips here. I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm going to go to video transitions. And mm -hmm. usually all I play with is the dissolve. Um, there's all sorts of crazy shit, just like you would imagine uh, with, like, you've seen those movie makers slash crazy PowerPoint type thing. Um, yeah. The best things are either just no transition, which is great. That's perfectly valid. Um, but some, if, it, if it seems awkward in some way, that's when I use a transition. If it, okay. looks, if it looks fine just snapping in the next clip, don't do a transition. It's going to be distracting. It's going to take more rendering time, etc. So, sure. but the best one is the cross dissolve, and Premiere always does complete overkill on the cross dissolve. Um, I usually always bring all these effects way back. I just give them a few frames. So if we do a cross dissolve here, I don't know if that showed through the video there. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was cross dissolve. I will I will traumatize this a little bit, but it will look obnoxious because we yeah the only time we would ever want to dissolve that slowly is uh, music I would say it's the only time I've ever seen people dissolve that slowly or like okay. a flashback but usually I just give it a couple frames you can even go really short because then it will simulate jumping cut but it'll be a little smoother so if you notice there it's just like having the snap cut except that it's a little smoother on the eyes because there's a couple frames of transition Sure. So they, the person viewing it thinks it's a jump cut, but it's not awkward. So that's useful as well. Cool. Um, sometimes if you're doing a transition and you want to make sure that they know the transition. So if I want to delete a transition, I want to, I just click the transition itself and hit delete. Okay. Okay, so bam, delete. Um, is a dip to white. So if we do a dip to white, it'll be, just be a little flash. And again, don't overdo it. Make it short. And it'll just be a little, bam, flash like that. So okay. it's just like a uh, flash going off in studio. In fact, if you are doing a flash in studio video, this might be a good transition to use because it's just kind of goes with the theme. Sure. Um, I usually don't use any of these other effects. However, I do sometimes use additive dissolve. Um, you'll see how this works. Where it kind of... Uh, it's it's a dissolve, but it flashes the white. Uh, oh, never mind. Um, I never use dip to black. It looks kind of strange uh, yeah. for a transition like that. However, I do use dip to white. Sorry, dip to black. If I'm going to change to a credits or if I'm going to change to uh, if I want to fade to a nighttime scene, I'll do a fade to black. Mm -hmm. So, and the way I usually do that is this is this dip the black is currently dipping the black and then and then undipping to the next clip. Uh -huh. The way I usually use it is I dip the black and then I jump cut. So I'll show you how that works. If you, um, but this wouldn't work for this because these are both daytime clips. But if you go all the way back to this clip here, you'll notice sure. none of the effect is on this scene, on this clip but it's only on this clip. So it's going to dip to black, and then we go to the next clip. Okay. okay. If you double-click this effect, you get a nice tool up here which gives you some granularity to the effect. Um, right now what it's doing is it's starting it so you can hit... Uh, doop, doop, doop. So if you, how do you play that? Oh, here we go. This slider here will show you the effect in action. Uh -huh. So... A is your first clip, B is the second clip. If you want to change this, so we only we want to be we want to end just like that. We can do that. So now it's going to just get to that point and then it'll jump basically to, to the next clip. 
So it was a weird, weird, awkward jump in light because it went from 77.1% opacity to full. OK. But that can be useful if you want to just not have the effect go the whole way, the whole whole transition and just part of the transition, you can do that. Hmm. Um, so like I said, like credits. So let me show you a quick, easy way to do credits. Um, and that's or an overlay. Um, you can do the most amazing, cool, lower th things in After Effects and inboard them, but After Effects is a whole other story. If you just want to click in dirty title card uh, or you know lower thirds or a credits page, what you mm -hmm. need to do is in the sequence you need to add a new item called a title. Okay. And when we do that, I'm going to call this uh, name card. The nice thing is it will preview the video in here right like that. If you don't mm -hmm. want to see that, you can click this, and it'll just show you a gray card. Okay. okay. Um, this is your safe areas. I usually try and stay within them. We're going to use whatever tool you want, and literally just that and work. Right. Sure. Um, and then you can uh, on the right side here. You can play all you want, but you can do a drop shadow and make it a little more easier to read. Okay. Right. So that's the title card there. And what we do now is we drag that title card to a uh, layer above. Black is opacity, so you can see it shows up right there. Um, we can have this fade in. I typically do do that. So if we do a um, cross dissolve and add it to the end here, what it's going to do is going to do cross dissolve from nothing to the title card, so it will fade in. So if we do that, it fades in. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then. If I knew in a fade in, I definitely do a fade out, otherwise it's awkward. So again, drag it on the end. It's going to fade the, to the next card, which is nothing, and it's going to fade out like that. OK, and then you just did the name card the whole length, or how did that work? Cause like, Yeah, so you can make the name card show up as long as you want. OK, cool. Uh, and then you can do your effects right here, and it'll do the transition. And you got the name card by right clicking over there. Okay, I got you. Yeah. And then you can obviously have other effects below it and all that. You can layer effects. You can have auto dissolve and a cross dissolve going on. So not at the same time, but you can have a cross dissolve and transition and then some other video effects going on, multiple video effects going on. That's what I'm talking about. Not multiple transitions, multiple effects. And layer as many effects as you want. Okay, so, mm -hmm. how, so how would I like color grade and stuff instead of Premiere? Yeah, so let's do video effects next. Okay. Okay, so we're going to select the clip. I'm going to go to adjust. We can do um, auto color, or if we go down to uh, give me a second to find it. Oh, time code, time code is useful if you want to do like a behind the scenes or like something for scientific study. It literally just throws on the time code. Um, when you do this effect, though, you need to select the actual time code of the uh, media and not the clip. Otherwise, it'll just show the time code of the actual clip. Um, or generate, which will do the whole freaking video, which is useful. Anyway, uh, okay. I'm going to do that. So. This is not going to give us what I want. No, it's just level What you want is the three color tool, and I don't remember, color correction, three-way color correction, yay, this is what we want, okay, so that mm -hmm. was under color correction, three-way color corrector, drag that on top of the clip, you now have a red bar because it hasn't been rendered yet, and here is your color grader, okay. um, and you can also do, um, uh, so this is color adjustment. If you want to do grades, um, download some and import them. But uh, I don't have any to show you right now, so I can't do that. But I can show you another time. Or just there's there's tutorials on doing natural grading okay. up the wazoo because everyone has their own freaking color grade. So can you can you explain what a color grade is then? Um, no. <laughs> okay. It it adjusts the tones of the whole video. Okay. How you want. 
So if you want flat tones, it will adjust all the tones to be flat, or it will do just the low tones to be flat, and any, any bright colors, it can either be flat as well. You can do different uh, ranges at different... Uh, you can saturate different ranges different ways. Okay. Um, so if you want, and you can uh, potentially do a filter too where you have the sky be graded darker and the ground not be graded darker. So that's useful if you have something on the horizon. It's like your graduated but, filter? Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. You can do that after, after a post-production. Um, so yeah, here's the mid-tones. You can change that individually. But and change the highlights individually and so forth, just like you would in, in Lightroom. Um, but if you just want to change the tone or the uh, white balance, the, you're going to want this three-color tool, and mm -hmm. you can go bluer to the right. Uh, what is that? Um, Seventy-five degrees, uh, or orange is the top left. Um, the recommendation I've heard often is have the uh, shadows uh, blue, because you want things like uh, shirts and so forth to be uh, more neutral, and then have mid-tones and highlights be more skin tone, because that's going to be the actual skin that shows up. Uh, so you can mm -hmm. go that way and that way, and then shadows down. So you can do it independently. It'll make this will warm the video up a more. OK. Um, tonal range is going to be like you're moving your blacks and your whites in the, that's not really racist, in the Lightroom, <laughs> um, because you don't want clipping. So if you are having clipping because it's underexposed or overexposed, you can move this up or down to adjust that clip. And if I move this, we can actually see what the hell we're doing. Ooh, we've got some blue going on. So yeah, you there can see do. this This did the darks there, and then this did our, our light tones. We're going to make them this look Jersey Shore-ish. Uh, <laughs> So if we want to change this, then we can, this should, yeah. So we're going to change. Gotcha. That looks awful now. You know, you get the idea. You just saturation and so forth, but those are your main tools. Sure. Um, auto color is useful if you're just doing some quick video. Um, all of this as well. Uh, blur sharpen, same idea. Although blur sharpen is extremely resource intensive, so when you go to render that, it's going to just take forever. Um, Do it overnight, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how I used to do it. I'm like Pentium 4. Um, crop is very useful. If you okay. are doing video, and one video is 720p, and the other video is 1080p, and you want to quickly upscale, or you want to... Um, do picture in picture, or if you want to make, uh, you only want part of a video, mm -hmm. uh, part of the frame, what we can do is we can do a crop. So I'm going to do a crop onto this video here. And then we go to the actual crop effect here. Make this smaller so you can see what we're doing. Um, and then what we do is we move this tool. You'll actually see that black bar come in. And that's going to be where we're cropping. Okay. okay. So I'm going to crop right around him. Oh, too far. And yeah, if you're doing 720p and 1080p, you can just crop those borders, basically. Because it'll the 720p video and a 1080p sequence will look, uh, it'll just not fill the frame. And if we click zoom, it will stretch. Okay. So if you keep these percentages uh, proportional, then that stretch will not look like crap. Gotcha. So that'll do a zoom, or you just don't zoom, and then you can. What you can do is go to uh, motion here, and go to mm -hmm. position, and we can move them around. Gotcha. And we can also change its scale here if we just want a quick, you know, not quick, but a not do a crop, but just zoom it. We can use scale at any time. So you always have motion, so you can always change the position of the frame in the sequence uh, window. And then that, that, that black space is a free and space, right? So if you, okay. clip, you could put it below it, and it would it would fill in behind it then? Yes, so exactly. So if there is something behind this video uh, on another track, it will show 
up in this black space. And then, so that would also work if you're scaling down, like, say, a 1080p video, you want to scale it down. So, like, say I was doing a tutorial and I want to have me in the frame in the yeah, bottom yeah. corner, I Absolutely. could scale it down and then move it and then I'd do that, right? Absolutely. And so I, I've done a 24 type thing where I had four panes. So I literally scaled them down to 25%, moved them to each corner of the of the page here, and then you know I had four videos going on at once. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, if you are syncing a bunch of it, if you have four cameras going for mm -hmm. a tutorial and you've done the syncing, a really useful tool is called Nest, and then we can do a four up for you. So if I can, I'll show you that right now. If I can take a quick segue, because this is useful. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I used that before briefly, but I could definitely use a refresher on it. Okay. So, you know, you have your multiple uh, video tracks here, and again, the audio is not freaking the track too, please. No. Multiple videos here. I will have up to four. Uh, we do a nest like this. It's going to create a new sequence for us. And there's our nested sequence, and there's our original sequence. Um, that didn't work the way I wanted it, because I didn't have both selected nest. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we need to collect our nested sequence itself. And now what we'll see is we only see one clip here, but if we go to... Uh, I haven't done this in four months, damn it. One second here, sorry. Sorry. Right. And the problem is I used the shortcut, now I don't remember what the shortcut is. Are you sure those are nested? Because I saw a nest as a available option when you right click there. You can nest again. Because. Oh, I, yeah, I, I, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. This is nested. So you're yeah. looking for multi camera? Basically, yeah. Uh, I saw that, that it was grayed out there. So just right click on that time. Ah, uh, okay. Yep, there you go. Cool. Bam. All right. So then if we go to, there should be a multi camera tool here somewhere. To view that. Uh, Window, maybe? Oh, uh, there we go, there we go. Just double click it. Okay. Right. So now we have um, both videos, but there's only one video in this nest. That's what I, th I think you can use your number key to switch between the cameras. Sure. No. Is that only one? Is that only one clip nested? Yes, but I'm not sure why the other one didn't mess. There it goes. There we go. All right. So just make sure you're all selected. And then you have your two cameras here. Um, mm -hmm. You should have the also... All right, so what I usually do is I have both these up, and I usually use two monitors, but I have this one monitor and I have this on the other. Um, there's two ways to do this. You can do a live edit like you were doing for sports, so you hit play, and I'm going to just turn it off while I'm on this way down because this is really loud. Yoink. All right. Um, and we can just select the next video. You'll notice down on the... Uh, timeline on the stage we're getting we're having some things happen where it's actually cutting it for us. So I'm not sure where we were. It's probably you're you're doing pretty far I think. Yeah. Change this around a little bit. 
time I record these, I'm missing the record. It's not automatically doing it. I'm missing something that I obviously that had recorded. Moment. There is a record option, and I might have to get back to you. Don't worry. Is it on the arrow right there? No. Next to the plus button? Yeah, it's not. Let's see. Let's see. So when you're doing this multi view, you can have it basically record your changes, and then it'll do the cuts down here for you. Um, and it's not doing that for us because it'll when it does the actual cuts it will uh, it will do a slice at the same place okay and now the reason I wanted to show you that is when it does do the auto slice and switch to the next video so there we go switch uh, if when you're doing it live you just you miss it by a few frames you can zoom in here as zoomed in as I can get. Because it's only a few frames. Um, and adjust where that cut happened. Should be able to. Something about the source video. So I will get back to you on this. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So you basically, what I just did there is I made room. So I'm going to say I want more of this video of the fire. So I'm going to move this this way. And I move this this way. It didn't actually move the clip, it just moved where the cut point is. So okay. I have more of the fire video and less of the dancing horse. All right. Sure. So when you do the auto recording, if you miss it on a couple of them, you can go in and change it. So that's okay. how that, that works. All right. Um, some quick thing about audio transitions. Same thing. Uh, I don't usually do audio transitions unless it's awkward. If there is some weird door closing at the end of one clip, I will sometimes just go to that clip there and I will. Um, unlink the video and cut out that door close or I will go in and add a keyframe which I can do here as well uh, I believe if I select it yeah add a keyframe uh, move to the door sound and move that volume down all the way gotcha and then on the other side of the door we can add a keyframe and then another keyframe and bring it back up so we just slice that freaking door closing out or whatever it is. Um, if it's between videos, so let's do that. Let me go back to our original sequence. Uh, here we go. Let me go to this stuff. Going in between clips and the sound is strange, what I will either do is a constant power or exponential fade. So a constant power is nice where it will keep the um, power of the track and what we need to do is actually have this cut a little bit so it actually has something to work with. Because mm -hmm. it will use part of the net of the what's to the left of this track to do the transition. So I'm going to do a constant power. There we go. Um, the noise will be the same but we'll do a crossfade. And it'll, so we'll transition like that. It's about as worse as it gets <laughs> from C noise to uh, echoey, reverby. Uh, music, but we can also do exponential fade, which is useful if we just want to make it go quiet. Well, we should use that at the end of the clip, and it's just like well, when we pulled the audio gradually down for that door, um, it's the same effect. Okay. And we can, if we do the across two clips, it will bring the first clip down, the second clip up. Alrighty, All right. so audio effects. Uh, sorry, audio transitions. Audio effects, I don't really do much, but you can change your bass and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, I usually don't do any audio effects here. I will use Audition and do the effects there. Okay. I don't need to do anything. I don't know how to use that yet, but yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> but, you know, if you need to remove noise, like high-end noise, you can do that uh, in another program, but you can also do... There's just denoiser, and there's also EQs where you can just pull out the high high uh, range. So yeah, so like so getting rid of the, 
that uh, noise because I had a boost from that uh, mic on my little tutorial video there. Right. Uh, so you can set your frequency, and then your uh -huh. gain you would pull all the way down. Okay. But you have to find the frequency that the noise is at. So just find a spot where I'm not talking at all, and then... Yeah, but the, see, that's why other software is nice, because when you're not talking, that's the the noise background thumbprint, and you can, just, you can just grab it and say, find this and delete it. Mm. Gotcha. But you can also do you know, your high-pass filter and so forth. Or straight-up mute. That's awkward, though. Yes, of course. Then people think their speakers died or something, right? Okay. Yeah, for the love of God, make sure that you have audio on the same balance, left to right ear. Can't stand these fucking tutorials where, not you, but uh, where people talk on the left ear. I use headphones, and uh, <laughs> it's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and then make sure you're not flatlining on the audio. When you go, a uh, couple things. When you're making your project to begin with, um, and you're making your sequence, real simple, make sure it matches the video. If you're doing mixed video, that gets really, 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 really awkward because the frames will go out of sync from each other. Okay, um, so when I'm shooting my D800, which, which settings should it be? I shoot at 24p, so do I do the ABCHD? Older than yes. or yes, yes, but it's whatever your frame is, which is probably 30 aka 29.97. Yeah. Um, but if you have a camera that's 60, you have a camera that's 29, you have a camera that's 24, it makes life easier if you set them all to 24. You can do multiple sequences, it kind of makes your workflow longer. Um, you can change their frame rate again, awkward. I usually just find a common denominator, okay. And then, so like, what does anamorphic mean? Because like I saw, the twenty-four and twenty-five anamorphic. Should I just not worry about that? Four forty p. Yeah, I don't. I never run into it. Okay, so, so like when I'm, shoot, when I'm shooting twenty-four p, my eight hundred just go to ten a twenty-four, right? Oh, I see the ratio is different. Anyway, so uh, yes, yeah, so if it's twenty-nine or or thirty, it's the thirty-one. Now, 25 and 24 are different. So you notice 25 is 25 even, 24 is 23.9, so yep. just be aware of that. But 30 is 29, and 60 is 59. Sure. Um, so, yeah, if you have them different, then they will become out of sync and it's obnoxious. Uh, you can do a 1080p container for 720p video. Uh, like I said, you just change the scale or do whatever you want to do with the 720p. 720p might be useful for picture in picture. Um, okay. Just make sure the frame rate's the same. Right. But so why AVCHD over like the digital SLR folder? Um, depends on what your camera actually shoots for the codec. This is usually for a flat file, um, a movie file. So it, it just depends on what you're doing. Okay. Uh, but you can you can use that if you have a, typically you want a flat fire. And that's also the thing about DSLRs is when you're recording, you kind of want to pull all the saturation and contrast and all that stuff back and then adjust with your uh, three-color tool to bring it, to boost it back up. So the video should look a boring as shit, and then you can use the uh, nice, powerful computer to do your proper colors and bring it back sure. again. Because right. most cameras don't do the raw. Cool. Uh, and this will be for your 480p stuff, definitely forbid. Yuck. Yuck. Yep. Uh, lastly, export. Uh, when you do an export, make sure you have. Oh, you need to select your sequence first and then do your export. Um, make sure you have whatever you actually need. Um, thank God they now have. Oh, sorry, I want H.264. Um, Thank God now they have all the YouTube stuff in here because before you had to set it manually and if you did it wrong back then, YouTube freaking just wouldn't work very well. It would, it would look like crap. But now at the mm -hmm. bottom here, there is... Why are you not scrolling automatically? YouTube HD. Cool. For 30 frame. Um, if you need to make a manual adjustment, you can here. A thing about HD is HD uses level 4. Um, if you're at level 3.1, you will not be able to do, so you see it just downgraded to 720, you will not be able to do HD. 
What's um, that one? It is. What's it profile? I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, for your frame rate, um, maximum right now for YouTube, I believe, is 11. So that set that as your max, but you don't want to set your target as a max because it will slow things down. And uh, when it when it's played back on another computer, um, it may not play back smoothly. So it's nice to have a max bit rate that's higher than your target. Your target needs to be whatever the recommendation is. So eight's the recommendation right now. Okay. For YouTube, um, I always do a two pass. One pass is faster. <laughs> two pass. <laughs> okay. It's gonna it's gonna encode twice. Sure. Audio AAC is the norm right now. Or at 480 is your CD quality good enough? And then FTP automatically uploads it. Yes, uh, cool. but if you do a queue, it'll open it up into uh, Media Encoder, and there's all mm -hmm. sorts of cool automation things you can do with Media Encoder, including auto encode or change the encoding and so forth. And so you can have multiple videos encoding while you use Premiere for something else. So I almost no, I do always use Media Encoder. I do a queue and then I do it through here and I can move on to the next video. Cool. Alrighty. All right. Thanks. That's uh, really helpful. So. Cool. Glad. Glad we recorded this. Yeah. Like <laughs> one more now. Oh, it's uh, about noon. About, not noon. About midnight. So. Oh, okay. Are you on this time? Yeah. Sick. Sweet. I'm going to call you back uh, on a not public thing, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. All right. Mm -hmm. All right.